Hi, I am Teresa O'Keefe, Technology Transfer Assistant for Pacific West Area Agricultural Research Service, USDA. It is my pleasure today to introduce this year's winners of FLC Far West's award for outstanding commercial success, ARS's very own Grain, Legume Genetics and Physiology Research Unit, located in Pullman, Washington, for their development and commercial release of new pulse varieties. George Vandemark is the research leader of the unit. George, will you please give us a brief introduction to what your unit has accomplished in the area of outstanding commercial success? Thanks for giving us a chance to talk about our accomplishment this year. This year, our unit released eight new varieties of pulse crops. And pulse crops are grain legumes that include beans, chickpeas, lentils, and peas. They're historically important crops for human nutrition, and they're grown in rotation with cereals, including wheat and barley and corn. This year we released one lentil variety, USDA Sage, which is a small green lentil. We also released two pinto bean varieties, USDA Basin and USDA Rattler. Two new spring sown yellow peas were also released by the research unit. USDA Kite and USDA Peregrine. But most importantly, three new fall sown peas were released by the unit, including two fall sown green peas, USDA Mica and USDA Din, and also a yellow pea, USDA Klondike. And these fall sown peas will provide growers with completely new cropping options to winter wheat and winter barley in the Pacific Northwest and Northern Plains of the United States. And in addition to the release of these new varieties, commercial licenses were also developed for two of our recent variety releases, the chickpea USDA Quinn and the pinto bean USDA Rattler. And now we can hear a bit more from the scientists that are principally involved in these releases. Thank you, George. Um, first, I'll ask Rebecca McGee, plant breeder, uh, uh, a series of questions regarding, uh, well, what is the importance, Rebecca, of these pea variety releases? And um, what sort of commercial interests have there been in these varieties? And finally, how does the public benefit from the development of new pulse varieties? Well, like George said, uh, Dint, Mica, and Klondike are autumn sown peas that are the first in their class. Uh, they're the first autumn sown, winter hardy, food quality peas that we've developed. Um, prior to 2009, autumn sown peas could not be sold in, in the more lucrative food quality market. They had to be sold as feed. In 2009, marketing regulations were changed and we started breeding fast and furious for food quality peas. We're able to uh, develop these peas with a lot of input from uh, our stakeholders and developing a desire, these desirable peas will allow the growers to shift some of their field work to the autumn and provide farmers in the low precipitation areas of the Pacific Northwest as well as the northern tier of states with a sustainable, uh, profitable rotational option to the small grains. In terms of the commercial interest, um, as the crosses were made, I got a lot of input and a lot of interest from uh, both farmers and processors. Um, I've had a tremendous amount of support from them and they really helped me direct this breeding program. Um, as the breeding lines were advanced to the cultivars, interest in evaluating and licensing the cultivars has also increased. And now we have uh, trials going out across the Northern Tier uh, to potential licensees. In terms of the public benefits, um, I think the biggest beneficiary by far is the farmer. They'll be able to shift field work from a rather risky, unreliable spring to a more reliable autumn. Uh, the uh, winter peas are a very good alternative, high yielding crop that will increase the sustainability and profitability of their operations and the crop will leave um, nitrogen as well as water in the soil profile behind for the subsequent crops. The crops. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, next, we're going to turn to Wei Dong Chen, plant pathologist for the unit. 
one of two plant pathologists. Um, and my question for you, Wei Dong, is um, why is resistance to stem and foliar diseases important to the development of new pulse varieties? Disease and resistance is always an important trait of new varieties. For the stem and the foliar diseases, they usually require in-season management, like application of fungicides. And the, the, the application of fungicides will increase the cost. With disease and resistance in the new varieties, and the growers would not have to apply the fungicide. With the reduced the fungicide application, everybody benefits, the growers, the consumers, and also the environment. As a plant pathologist, I am very proud to be part of this group. Thank you. Thank you, Wei Dong. Less fungicides. I like that. And um, now Lyndon Porter, also a plant pathologist with the, the unit. Uh, my question for you, Lyndon, is why is resistance to root diseases important to the development of new pulse varieties? Good, good question. Uh, root diseases impact the ability of the plant to uptake water and important mineral nutrients in the soil. And legumes root uh, diseases also limit the root's ability to form important symbiotic relationships with beneficial what are called rhizobial bacteria in the soil that fix nitrogen uh, for the plant and, for, and provide residual nitrogen to future rotational crops. So developing legumes with root disease resistance not only benefits that crop, but it also positively impacts the growth and yield of rotation crops that follow. Um, in addition, when you develop uh, cultivars with resistance to major root rot pathogens, you reduce the buildup of these pathogens in the soil and dramatically reduce the risk and the, uh, the ri grower risk and the ability of the growers to consistently produce a successful high yielding crop. Thanks, Lyndon. That was a great explanation. Another Phil Miklas, our, uh, another plant breeder with the unit. And I'd like to ask you, in regards to the beans that you uh, have been released, what is the importance of these bean variety releases? What sort of commercial interest has there been in these varieties? And how does the public benefit from the development of new pulse varieties? The two new uh, pinnel beans offer versatility and rusticity uh, for the growers. Uh, the beans are bred under low input stressful environments and under high input normal environments. So they have to do well under both conditions and the materials that come out of that system are broadly adapted to different production regimes. So they do well in the Midwest, also in the Pacific Northwest, and they do well under low input agriculture and uh, normal input agriculture. So. Uh, there has been uh, interest from seed companies in the Midwest. Uh, one of the Midwest companies uh, licensed one of the varieties. And then there's companies in the Pacific Northwest that are also interested in licensing uh, these pinnel beans. And these pinnel beans uh, provide uh, uh, opportunities for growers to use less chemicals when they produce these beans. So it contributes to a safer environment. Uh, less fertilizer contributes to less fertilizer runoff into the water systems. And then they contribute to the sustainability of the U.S. dry bean production uh, industry uh, as a whole in the U.S. Thank you, all of you, for um, contributing and releasing these uh, new, new pulse varieties. George, do you have any concluding remarks? I'd like to note that our research unit is one of five research units co-located with Washington State University. And so I'm very grateful for the support of Washington State University and our grower cooperators. And also, of course, for all the efforts of personnel with the USDA ARS Pacific West Office of Technology Transfer and the USDA ARS Headquarters Office of Technology Transfer in Beltsville, Maryland. Thank you.